PID is a chronic disease and those patients uh, have a risk of uh, re-stenosis at the same location of the treatment site or stenosis in other locations. So what we basically want is uh, to maintain as much uh, as, uh, of uh, treatment options as we can. Uh, with IVL, we have this option that we can treat a patient efficiently uh, without implanting, for example, a stent. And the stent would limit further treatments. So with this method, we can really leave nothing behind. And if the patient comes back, we can treat the same location with all the methods that we have. DCB, stent, atherectomy, or again IVL. When using the device, uh, you basically do the same like in uh, balloon angioplasty, but it's not a balloon angioplasty. It's uh, just, uh, uh, it looks similar. But when you use the device, first is uh, you use with a low pressure uh, um, a, a balloon-like device that applies sonic uh, pulses to the calcium. And with a low pressure inflation of the balloon, you make contact to the vessel wall and to the calcium, and then you apply the sonic waves. And by this, you can crack the calcium and you can even see it in real life on the monitor. And after that, you deflate the device, remove it, and you can see that there is uh, nearly no recoil like in a standard balloon angioplasty. When you first uh, uh, have the balloon in your hands, you think it's a PTA balloon because it looks similar. But then it's a completely different system where you don't apply this, uh, this um, brachial force on the vessel wall, but you, with this uh, balloon-like device, you only make contact to the vessel wall so that you can apply sonic waves to the calcium. And this uh, helps you to crack the calcium with a very low pressure to the vessel wall. Thus, um, you don't have this uh, damage to the vessel wall that you have in a PTA with a PTPA balloon. So this is the main difference between PTA and IVL. You can imagine if you crack this uh, calcium in a very small steps um, without applying um, this, this, this force uh, with a PTA balloon, and that you um, can create a, a smoother vessel wall that can uh, react to the blood flow, to the pulses of the blood flow, and even to the changes of the leg when you, when you bend the leg. So uh, by using IVL and cracking the calcium in these small pieces and impacting it, you, this is my theory, that you uh, can um, allow the vessel to move again um, like uh, a healthy vessel, or more like a healthy vessel. So this is uh, what we think that raises the uh, compliance of the vessel. Currently, I use the device in all the patients with uh, PAD um, that have a moderate to severe calcification, regardless of the treatment site. Even in renal stenosis or mesenteric stenosis, even if I want to place a stent anyway, but have a severe calcification, I can facilitate the stent placement uh, with IVL and thus gain more lumen for the stent. So basically in all the patients with um, macroscopic moderate to severe calcification. The thing about IVL is that um, if you have, for example, a resident that can do PTA, he can also do IVL. But if you ask the same resident uh, to do atherectomy, then it's a different because atherectomy has a longer learning curve. So IVL is very simple to use. This is the first thing. The second thing is if you use IVL and the result is not good, you can still use all the methods in your toolbox. So you can do atherectomy, you can do stand placement, you can do whatever you want. So it doesn't limit or or jeopardize any other method that you have in your toolbox. Shockwave IVL represents a paradigm shift in my daily routine because it's an effective method that provides me with reproducible results in the treatment of calcified vessels across all the vessel beds.